Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance. Got our washing machine here. It only works with cold water. Got a problem with the hot water. But I switch it here. Here it is on the cold side. Works just fine. Switch it over to the hot side and this is what I get. Just like dribbling through. So checking the hose here, the hot side. Water is turned on. Turn the water off and stop the machine. Now I'm going to disconnect the hose and to prove that we have hot water. So just take the hose off here. Careful not to lose the gasket that's inside the hose end. I'll position it here and turn the water off. Turn the water on. We definitely got water, got flow. So next in here, there's a little screen, inlet screen. We can check that. Pop it out. I'll use my pliers to pull it out. Here it is, cleaning it out, just tapping it out. Probably good to tap it into like a, a rag or something. But it was pretty clean. Not bad, but then here's the filter inside the machine. This one has one, a lot of them don't. But uh, definitely want to make sure that gets cleaned out. And that can cause problems if it gets clogged up too much. Might have actually caused the problem on this one. This one was deeper in the machine. It was actually the uh, inlet valve. I'll show you here taking this apart. You want to unplug your machine first. This part pops up and then a screw or two in the back that holds the cover on. And this one unfortunately the inlet valve is no longer being made so I couldn't get parts for this one. But I'm uh, going to show you how I was able to fix it. It actually was, wasn't too difficult. And uh, this was my creative fix where I didn't need to buy any parts. But other options also. Anyway, we've got a screw here to remove. And then that allows the removal of the cover plate. And allows us access to the inlet valves. Got it unplugged there. You can see the cord unplugged down there. Here's the cover. And then there's our inlet valve assembly. It also has a little metal metal cover plate that holds it in place. So we'll need to remove those screws to pull off the cover plate. And then that allows us to pull up the solenoid inlet valves. Got the hot side on the left and then the cold on the right. For the cold side, there's a set of two solenoids on this machine. So the hot side has one solenoid and then the cold side has two on this machine. And one solenoid can turn on along with the hot solenoid and that way you can get warm water. And then one solenoid on the cold side can turn on by itself. Just popping out the screws here. There was one screw that was uh, not able to get in there with my drill. so. Just going to use my screwdriver as I can reach in there a little bit further and just turn it out by hand. Now 
Now we can move that cover plate and then that gives us access to the solenoid valves. This one I'm actually pulling the screws out to remove that hot side solenoid valve. It's got four screws around it. And you can actually pull the solenoid valves straight up. They have a little gasket that inserts But yeah, there's four screws that hold the solenoid valve on. So carefully removing those screws and then I can pull the solenoid assembly out. So the solenoid is an electromagnet. And what it does is it pulls this little plunger in. It's got a plunger and then a, sc a, screw, um, a spring behind that. So when the solenoid valve turns on, it sucks in, the, it pulls the deal down. And then when the solenoid valve turns off, it springs back out and closes off. This is when everything appears to function properly, no problem there. And then here's the assembly. So this is the hot side. And you see that little plate there, how it's got those holes in there? That little plunger pushes against the center portion and seals it off or opens it up and then it's got a little hole in the top part and that equalizes the water pressure and seems like this one was malfunctioning this is my problem here um, I've looked around I haven't been able to find where you could buy these separately you may be able to find it somewhere I wasn't able to my solution for this was actually to change it with the other with the center cold one because it's linked with the hot one and then it won't turn on with the warm one. Um, but looking here, I can see a small hole around the left side. I think that it's the O-ring or the, or the flat black washer portion that was damaged on this one, the inlet diaphragm. Uh, but the solution that I had for this was changing it with the one right next to it. So this one no longer would get warm water, but you wouldn't really notice because it's hot or cold. And that was the best solution. At least then I have hot and cold water, which makes warm anyway. So it changed the plunger and the, the, uh, the deal. Just slightly, if you, you know, another few screws to take apart. The other side wasn't too bad though. But anyway, switch those out and everything's working good. That was my solution for this. Uh, of course, you can buy a new inlet valve as a whole package, but this one was actually discontinued, no longer available. Um, so there's other ways it could be done, but that's how I got around this one and thought I'd share it here, was able to repair it. You can't even really tell. So um, it's been repaired. This was maybe six months to a year ago now. Everything's still working good. I did try a few other options with this one. I tried changing the valve with a dishwasher solenoid valve. Uh, that didn't work out, so I thought I'd spare you the trouble of uh, that. And uh, and I did uh, rotate it through trying which valve would work best to change it out with. I also tried cleaning uh, the first valve first, putting it back together. That didn't work. And then I tried swapping it with each of the hot side ones to see which way would work best. And the best one I came up with was the center one. Um, but, you know, it may be a bit of trial and error, but this is a way that you could work it out uh, without needing to buy parts. Um, the uh, new entire valve assembly was like $300, but then at my last check, it was no longer available. So uh, for this particular model, but just thought I'd show it to you on this one as I thought it might be helpful to somebody that uh, finds a similar issue with their washing machine. You gotta be ready for the Lord's return. The Lord is gonna come for his bride anytime. Uh, Jesus came to seek and to save those that were lost. That was me. We've all missed the mark. Every person sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus took the punishment that we rightfully deserve on himself at the cross and he gives his righteousness to those that believe on him. So if you haven't put your trust in him, call out to him to save you. It's a gift of salvation. You can't earn it. He did it all on the cross and he calls us to a loving relationship with him. So you are invited to be reconciled to God. 
something that was impossible. God is holy and our sin separated, but without God, it was impossible. But God came to save us. He sent his son, Jesus. You know, again, he took all of our sin on the cross and uh, gave himself so that we could be justified in him. So call out to him, get into the Bible, into the word and start to grow so that you're protected from deception. There's strong delusions out there, strong deception. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to God. So don't don't get tripped up or tricked. And don't don't miss out on what is yours through Jesus. So call out to him today. Don't wait. Time is short. He's gonna return for his people. And uh, if you missed it and you find yourself in the tribulation, call out to Jesus to save you. Uh, you likely die for your faith, but still, like you have eternal life. The tribulation only lasts seven years, so if you find yourself in part of it, you know it's not going to be long before everything's finished. Anyway, seven years is not a long time, although in the tribulation it's going to seem like a long time. But be faithful unto death. That means trusting in Jesus all the way. Um, there's probably not going to be a lot of food. Um, and it's going to be a difficult situation, but uh, you, you can still have eternal life through Jesus because, again, he took all of our sin on himself at the cross. So put your trust in him today so you don't miss out and uh, so that you have the covering. Because he is the lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. All right, stay safe out there. God bless. God bless you.
Thank you.